A lot of people, you know, a lot of groomers are great with dogs. They're great groomers, and they don't really know how to how to run a business. And you know, maybe they haven't been to school. They don't know, you know, haven't taken many business courses. Don't have a lot of business sense. But we want to kind of help guide you along in that. And the most important thing when you're starting a business is branding yourself, because this business is a brand for you. So whatever you do, whether Sue owns a shop and she's got ten employees, everything that goes out of that shop is basically Sue's brand because she owns that shop so you have to think when people first come in you know in your shop or in your mobile you know you want it to smell good you don't want it to smell like dogs you don't want there to be urine stains on the floor you want everything to be nice and fresh and clean so they feel comfortable when they drop their dog off to you and you know another thing if you have somebody greeting the dogs or if the groomers coming out and greeting the dogs the groomer definitely needs to look presentable um, you know a lot of groomers think of hygiene I say this all the time a lot of groomers think of hygiene hygiene as a greeting and it's not <laughs> so we need to be professional the more professional we look and the more professional that we act when we're meeting somebody or coming in contact with these dogs the more those people are going to respect us the more they're going to be more willing to pay us more money for our grooms and they're going to be more willing to rebook rather than jump from one shop to the next and you know start that whole price war between groomers I think that was one of the first things that I learned um, you never get a second chance to make a first impression. And when I would have people come into my shop for the first time, the first thing they'd do is go, it smells clean in here, not like that last place. So that, you know, and I always, in, I always kept a clean shop. Everything was cleaned and disinfected at the end of every day. Um, and, and over the course of the day, you want to make sure that you keep it nice and clean. If somebody decides that they want to pop in, I'm new in the area and I've got a dog and I just want to kind of check out your facility. Do you mind if I look around? Sure, go right ahead. And you don't want to go, uh, wait 10 minutes, would you? And you have to run back and, you know, clean and sweep and vacuum and, you know, that kind of a thing. I mean, it's, there's instances that happen where somebody brings their dog in, especially rainy days. People hate walking their dog on rainy days. And as soon as they come through the door, they're going to poop on your floor and then the next person walks in that's the first thing they smell and uh, you know with me I've got the cleaner in one hand and the in the in the rag in the other and I'm saying oh I'm so sorry because the last dog just had an accident or whatever so you want to know right off the bat that you know that isn't what your your shop normally smells like so um, you know as Jay said having that professional look and I think it took a long time for groomers to learn that because we were just kind of labeled as playing with dogs all the time and you know I know when I started off we had t-shirts made that had the pampered pet on them with our we have a little cute little spotted dog logo on it um, and we wore jeans because you were working on dogs and that's that's all we had we didn't have the grooming apparel available to us back then and um, you know so at the end of the day after you've done working on a Siberian Husky you've got pills and rolls of dog hair all over you and you go out and you're greeting the customer and you're kind of picking dog hair out of your mouth and they don't even want to really get close to you. They're glad their dog looks like that but they really don't want to get close to you. You go to your vet and they are all wearing scrubs and they're looking very professional and they charge you four thousand dollars for an office visit and you don't blink twice at that because everything is professional and, it, and it's worth it you're paying for every penny so the whole atmosphere the whole look of you in your shop is very important for that person when they come through the door for the first time and so many people think of us as like Sue said just playing with dogs all day if you're working and you're working day to day and you're not making any money at the end of the week you know you're spending all the money you make whether you know it's just trying to keep the shop up then that's a hobby to me a hobby is something that you do that you love and you don't make money now a business is something that makes money so I I don't want this to be a hobby for me. I want to run it like a business. I want to treat my scheduling like a business. I want to treat the customers like, you know, they're getting a service and they're paying for a service. Um, these people that come in late, it's just like if you go to a doctor, you usually wait 45 minutes to an hour just to see that doctor. And how many people, when they come to you, if they come to you and they're late or, you know, if you're a mobile groomer and they don't show up on time, you know, they're 15, 20 minutes late, they don't realize, or they probably do, but, you know, 15 minutes off our day, for me, time is money. And if I have 15 minutes off, you know, one customer a week, at the end of the week, I have a couple of hours worth of dogs that I could have done and I'm running by behind and those people you know they need to be charged for it you either need to charge them for it and then tell them you know if it happens again then they're gonna have to go elsewhere um, but 
if you let them get away one time with being late and you take them in and that puts more dogs on the end of your day and your, your day winds up running late because of that, then it's not worth it to me. And those people wind up not respecting your time and they just wind up taking advantage of you over the years. So.